original super fun and all about artisan cheese and more to melt your peaceful heart and toast your peaceful life. Coming to you from the Appalachian Mountains of southwestern Virginia, this is the Peaceful Heart Farmcast. Hey, this is Scott Hall from Peaceful Heart Farm, and you are listening to the Peaceful Heart Farmcast. Hello, everybody. Melanie Hall here. Hope you are doing well. The conversation today and every day revolves around the value of tradition, traditional homestead living, traditional raw milk products, and artisan cheese. Topics discussed here are designed to create new perspectives and possibilities for how you might add the taste of tradition to your life. A bit of a poignant topic in today's podcast is, does parental grief ever end? I have that and lots more to talk about today. Welcome each and every one of you, new and vets. Thank you so much for tuning in for each episode. I appreciate you all so much. The homestead brings joy to daily life, and I want to share some of it with you. Every day brings some new incident for me to add to my memories of homestead life. Today it's the donkeys and sheep that provide the entertainment. The sheep have always been standoffish. They will continue to graze unconcernedly until you get about 15, maybe 20 feet away. And then they will gradually start moving away, still eating and moving away. And if you walk directly toward them at that point, they will start moving away more quickly, as in running very fast in the other direction. So this morning, I went out to check on everybody and there was this one ewe that was laying down and not moving away with the rest of the flock. In fact, she was laying there as if she was dead. I'm and I, I'm looking for another set of twins soon and the coloring of this ewe said it might be her and you know, I'm like, wow, I hope she's okay. I walked right up to her until I was maybe three feet away and suddenly she raised her head, saw me, she jumped to her feet, boing, and proceeded to move quickly away Uh, on the way then she stopped to nuzzle her twins (laughs) yeah uh she was the mom of the twins that we already have but it was quite funny to see her jump up so quickly I had gotten so close to her and funnier still that I was even able to get that close to her without a bucket of treats in my hand and then uh, the donkeys provided a different kind of entertainment We have four donkeys. Two are in the front field with the boys. Uh, That's the steers, sheep rams, and goat bucks. And uh, those, so that would be Johnny and Sweet Pea. Then there are two in the middle field with the sheep mamas, and that's Daisy and Coco. These are our livestock guardian animals. Uh, Daisy and Coco have the greater job at this time of year. When lambs are born, there's an increase in the likelihood of predators coming to gobble them up. The donkeys make lots of noise, and we have rarely had any issues over the years. Many times you can hear the coyotes in the distance, but they never really come close anymore. There was a time when we could hear them very close, but not so much anymore. Our donkeys do a wonderful, wonderful job in protecting the sheep and especially the lambs. And the first story that I have today involves their care for the lambs. Each morning and each afternoon, I make the trek out to field number five at this point to check on the sheep and their lambs and to give Wendell his bottle. Wendell is our bottle fed calf. He hangs out with Luna, our newest heifer. So we've got those two over there with the sheep and the two donkeys. And yesterday, on the evening trip, I was in the vicinity of where the sheep were hanging out. And as per my usual method, I was counting ewes and lambs, making sure everyone was accounted for, no one was missing in action. And the the ewes were out grazing on the grass, as they love to do, but the lambs were nowhere to be seen. Lo and behold, as I got nearer to the creek bottom, I saw the donkeys hanging out under the trees and the next thing I knew there were lambs coming out from behind them and they're just coming out venturing out for their evening frolic in the grass Daisy and Coco had been babysitting while the moms were out in the field grazing it was so cute 
Then I counted them and I came up one short. I immediately struck out for the creek, intending to, to check on the other side of the creek. When they're this small, I keep a very close eye on them. Sometimes they get separated from mom and need me to rescue them and reunite them with the flock. This time, however, my worry was unneeded. Out from behind Coco came the last little lamb and she stopped to touch noses with Coco before joining her friends for a little run and jump action. So all were safe and present. Check on with feeding the calf. So it was it was so cute to see the little babysitting operation going on there. You know, you see that with the uh, lambs will all play together and maybe one you will stay with them. But to see them just there with the donkeys and their moms were all out away grazing. Anyway, it was really cute. I want to tell one more story about the donkeys before I move on to the quail babies. Uh, When I go out for evening chores, I bring along music. In my ears are stuffed earbuds as I listen to some of my favorite music, singing along, of course, with earbuds on. I'm sure I'm singing flat most of the time. After all, I can't hear myself. In my mind, it sounds great, but who knows? There's no one to give me any feedback. Except I did get some feedback. A few days ago, I was out there singing softly a sweet song, and the donkeys came walking up to me. Usually, I have to go to them. And sometimes they are contrary and will even run away. But not this time. They came walking up to me as I softly sang a song. At least I think I was singing softly. I do recall that it was a sweet song. Not sure the title or the subject. So they came walking up to me and begged for attention. I start petting Daisy and uh, Coco comes up and puts her head on Daisy's rump so I can pet her too. And eventually Daisy turned around and they entwined their heads while I was gently stroking them both and singing softly into their ears. It was uh, it was just, it was so, so cute. I've done it a couple of times since then. I'm not sure what the signal is in my singing. They don't always come up to me. Sometimes they completely ignore me. And I might be singing really loudly. So I think it was related to the song, you know, whether they liked it or not. When I'm singing loudly, they definitely keep their distance. I know that much. But all in all, it's a very sweet time for us. I I have on my list of things to do to add a curry comb to the bucket of supplies. I carry a bucket around what during lambing that I use for taking care of new lambs and so I think I might put a curry comb in there I'm sure both Daisy and Coco will love a good combing they're shedding their winter wool and uh, I'm sure I could help with that it's a good scratchy thing now the quail the baby quail are they're all outside now and looking great in their new hotel suites Uh, there are two cages sorry there are two areas Um, They're mainly evenly split between the cages, right? There's half on one side and half on the other side, and each has two areas. So there's a main area where the food and water is. That's the larger area. And then they have the spa area where they can take a nice dust bath in the sand. And the sand box is part of the enclosed area, which is on each end of the coop. So these birds are living the life, let me tell you. So that's the top rack. One thing that I'm still learning is how to keep them from jumping out when I open the cage door. I try to chase them to the back of the cage, but inevitably, on most days, one or more will escape when I open the door to replenish their food and water. Then I'm out there chasing down these quail chicks. So far, I have been able to capture them and return them to their cage. One day, the cage door was left open on one of the breeder cages. That's the row that are below these two larger cages on top. So it's just below what we call that grow-out cage. And there are six birds in each of the three breeder cages. And they also have a dust uh, bath spa in uh, in each of the cages. Anyway, the door was open and all six birds were out and about for a few hours. Now, Scott caught most of them once he found that they were out and got them replaced securely in their hotel rooms. However, one was missing. One of the hens was missing. And later in the day, 
I went out to the milking shed to get ready to bring up the cows. And there she was, the missing hen, I mean. She was in the milking shed. And I was able to catch her up and get her secured as well. Just a little chasing around. And uh, they don't fly very high at all. Anyway, all's well that ends well. The hens were all hesitant to lay eggs for a few days after that. A little bit of drama. But they're all back up to full production now. So all's well with all the quail. Now the cows are doing really well. Scott's working on getting set up for our first experience with artificial insemination. Uh, soon it will be time to start the breeding process so that we can have calves born in the spring. This year... We are using AI or artificial insemination. This gives us much greater control of the genetics and gender of our calves. We picked two bulls that have the characteristics we're looking to develop in our herd. They both have these same characteristics. Number one characteristic is A2A2 genetics for our herd share milk. And I've talked about A2A2 genetics before and I did a whole podcast on what it is and how it works. Um, now, as we expand, we need more cows that provide this type of milk as we expand our herd share program. And eventually, all of our, care, our cows will have the A2A2 genetic component. Now, the other genotype we're seeking to develop is BB kappa casein. I know that means nothing to you, and, that, and that's fine. It's just a label. BB kappa casein, it's a protein. It's a milk protein specifically beneficial in cheese making. Right, So the Normandy breed is great with this trait, uh, but again, we want to get everyone on the same page and not everybody is BB. Some are AB, I think. I think we have ABs and, and one BB. So we want to get them all BB so we get the very best cheese that we can. And it'll take a few years, but we'll get there. Now, gender is also an important factor to consider. We want to have male calves or, sorry, when we when we have, we don't want to have when we have male calves or bulls, they end up as steers and are grow and they grow up to be beef cow, beef cows, beef cattle. Anyway, and that takes about two years. And while the extra income from selling beef is nice, it is yet another marketing task that I need to find time for in my already busy schedule. It is far better to have female calves or heifers. We can grow them out for beef if we desire, but they are also very valuable as replacement stock for ourselves as we're, again, as we're building up our herd of A2, A2 and the BB beta uh, kappa casein, then we're going to, we're going to keep the heifers that have those traits. And then they also, uh, they'll be breeding stock for others once we have our, our herd the way we want it. It, lots of people are looking to add the Normandy cow to their herd. We get lots of calls for heifers. No marketing required. People find us. In the past, we have not had any to offer. And indeed, again, over the next few years, likely we still will not have any until we get our herd into, sh into the shape we desire. But eventually, we will have heifers for sale. So artificial insemination is the way that we'll be moving forward. We will not have any bulls on site from this point forward. We're going to pick and choose our bulls. And since they're rare in this area, we're doing the artificial insemination. And again, that totally gives us the, when we get sexed semen, it totally gives us control over the gender of, of the calves, which is really important to us. So that's the cows. Now the goats, apparently the goats are now contained within the current paddock. Can you believe it? It's been quite a few days and they are still where we put them. Scott worked long and hard to patch up the holes in the fence where they were sneaking through from paddocks 10 and 14 into paddock 11. Thank goodness. We shall see how long that lasts. The last experience that I want to share today has to do with the question, does parental grief ever end? This morning, I was out gathering the cows. I had my earbuds in and was listening to my usual mix of music, and the weather was a bit wet. It was definitely cool. I love these morning and afternoon walks out on our land. The birds are singing. Often there's a soft breeze. It was quite breezy this morning. The geese are all over the place squawking and making their usual racket, splashing around in the water. And, and just 
Life is great here on the homestead. Peace abounds in every corner of my world. Love wells up within me as I take in these many wonders of God's creation. Contentment oozes out of my pores during these times. I, I just love walking around out there and just experiencing it. And thoughts gently flow through my mind. Not overpowering, not overwhelming as before when I worked in the stressful corporate IT world. A bit of worry here and there, but nothing like the stresses you all probably still endure that I have endured in the past. It, it's quite the contrast. Before, it was not so much physical labor, but lots of mental stress. And now there's lots of physical stressful labor and much less mental stress. And I like that trade-off. Mu I'd much rather have the physical stress and peace of mind. It took us a while to get here, but you know, you hold that you hold that uh, idea in mind for long enough, and you can get there. And often I think of my life and how I got to where I am today, and that inevitably brings up thoughts of my parents. And like many of you, there were ups and downs in my childhood as a teenager. I had real issues with my parents. Resentment filled me and I blamed them for my unhappiness. Then I grew farther and farther apart from them as I built my adult life. You know, cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. And uh, and that, that sort of syndrome, you know, we'll get together then and then it never happens. Though I talked with my mother often, especially in the latter years uh, when she was in her 60s and 70s just about my age actually and I was in my 40s and 50s and my dad remained the same kind of rocks throughout my entire life he never changed that much in my eyes anyway I'm sure he actually did change we all do you know the resentment faded and re respect replaced it just as my life was filled with challenges and mistakes so were theirs we all do our best like many of you, like me, we judge our cho choices as not good enough. And we still struggle to be better, but we always do the best we can with what we have in the moment. And we inevitably make mistakes. My parents have both been gone now for a while. It seems like they're still here and it feels like they've been gone forever and a day. My mother died over five years ago, and my father nearly four and a half years ago. And the last three months of his life he spent with me as I gently caught him as he fell, grieving still for my mother and his body giving out after six years, expending every bit of energy he had to care for her as she lived out her final days. When I think of them, the deep grieving loss wells up in me. Any of, one, any of you who have lost a loved one know what I'm talking about. And a, the deep sense of love and grief at the loss of love that seems to spontaneously surge through my heart. Tears instantly fill my eyes as I'm thinking of them. I can feel it even now as I speak. And I wonder, does it ever end? Will I grieve the loss for the rest of my life? I don't mind. I'm grateful for the ability to feel love for them, even in their absence. I'll bet some of you have similar stories. I'll bet some of you experienced your life, your loss, more than five years ago and still feel it today. What do you think? Does parental grief ever end? I do not think so. At least I hope it never does. I want their memory to live on in me forever. What about you? Final thoughts today. I hope you enjoyed the homestead stories and come back again and again to hear more. It has taken me a while to find my stride and to land on what I have to offer. It took a while to realize that all I have is me and my experiences. Every day I strive to experience greater love and peace. I strive for God's grace and forgiveness. If you enjoyed this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts. Search for Peaceful Heart Farmcast. 
Peaceful Heart Farmcast and subscribe. Take a moment to give me a five-star rating and a review. And if you enjoy this content, the best thing you can do to help me is to share it with any friends or family who might be interested. Thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. And until next time, may God fill your life with grace and peace.